Hey everyone, so today we're gonna do something new. We're gonna display the text that the user inputs. So basically whatever we type in, we're gonna see that on the Pygame window. We won't use any new module. It's just the utilization of the available modules, whatever we have learned till now, as per the program's requirements. So let's get started. So I'll import Pygame first. I'll write import Pygame, then pygame.init to initialize it. Then I'll have my screen. I'll write pygame.display.set mode, and that would be 500,500. Then I'll also set up a caption. My caption would be user input. So I'll write pygame.display.set caption user input. Fine. Then I'll do the while true loop, the game loop. I told you last time that I like to make the basic structure first, then do the rest of the code, then write the rest of the code. Then I'll have my events loop. I'll write for events in pygame.event.get. If events type is equal to pygame.quit, I'll check the condition. Then I'll quit. I'll call the quit function of pygame. Yeah. Then I'll update this entire thing. I'll write pygame.display.update. So yeah, that's the basic code. That's the basic three steps of any Pygame program. Now, since I'm saying I want a user inputs, I should of course have an empty string to which I'll concatenate whatever the user inputs. So let's, let me take this user underscore IP as the variable, as the empty string. Then I'll have my font because of course we need to take a font. We are working with text in Pygame. So please remember how we display text on screen. It would be similar to that. So I'll write font equals pygame.font.sysfont font. And you can take any font you like. You can take Georgia, Arial, Calibri. Uh, I have taken French script right now and the font size would be 40. Cool. Then since I want a rectangular box in which I'll input the text, I will initialize this text box. Since I want to manipulate this, later in the code i'll do this pygame dot i'll use this rect module i'll write pygame dot rect and i'll give in the arguments the initial position that would be 75 comma 75 and the size of the box let it be 100 comma 40 so the width is 100 and height is 40 fine okay let's not keep this 40 let's make it 50 because i want a margin of 10 of 5 each at above and below the text so that things don't overlap and don't seem to be clumsy cool then i'll have this active boolean that will tell me if i can start writing if i can start typing in the text box and what will indicate me this is this color variable so initially this would be purple but when active is true i'll switch this color to red so that it, I can know that I can now start typing. Whenever I take my cursor to inside the text box, I'll see, I'll make this active to be true. So how I do this, I'll do this in the while true loop and in the for loop. I'll check if my events type is mouse button down. Then if I'll, I'll check if I have clicked my mouse inside that text box. Okay, so I'll write if text box dot collide point and events dot position is act uh, is is true so i'll make active equals true cool otherwise i'll make active equals false maybe you have clicked outside the screen or, or outside the box so then active should remain false otherwise it should be true made true if my cursor is within the text box fine and now if I've started typing, so I'll write if events.type equals pygame.he down. And if active is true, maybe it can be the case that you have clicked inside the box and then clicked outside and then started typing. So that would not work. Then you should not get any text displayed. So I'll check if active is true. And then I'll have these two other conditions. If I press backspace, so I'll write if events.key equals pygame.clave underscore backspace. 
I'll slice the string. Okay, I hope you know about list, uh, list and string slicing in py Python. So what I'll do is I'll make user the string, this user underscore IP string as a sliced string. I'll slice the last character out of the string. And how do we do that? We mention the stop index to be minus one. So the last character is removed now. Else, if we do not press backspace, we write, uh, we give any keyboard input, we concatenate that Unicode. Okay, so I don't need to make several cases for this, that if I've pressed this key, I should append this or concatenate this to the string. I would just write events.unicode. So it is very convenient. Then I'll fill my screen with a color. You can take any color. I'll write screen.fill. I'll take pink. And now it's time I set up the color and get my indications that I can start writing or not. So I'll say if active is true, I'll take the color, I'll assign the color variable, the color red. And if it is not, if active is false, I'll write else color is equals to pi pi game dot color purple cool then i'll draw my rectangle so i need to see a box i need to visualize a box so i'll write pi game dot draw dot rect and i want the screen to be the surface on which i draw and then i'll have this color variable the color of the box then the parameters of this rectangular box are given by text box cool and you of course need to mention this width otherwise you'll see the entire box to be of the purple or red color according to the situation i don't want that i just want the border to be of some color fine then i'll have this surface on which i render my text so you can see i have not rendered it here above but i'll render it in the while loop because every time the user gives an input i want that text on the screen so i have rendered it here and not above outside the while true loop so i'll write surface uh, surf is equals to font dot render and what is my message what do i want to output on the screen it's the user underscore ip variable that string i want anti-aliasing to be true and the color of my text i'll take it to be orange you can take any color fine now let me get this surface surf variable onto the text box so i'll do screen dot split and what i want to get on which surface i want to get surf this text on my text box and i'll have a margin of five units so that things don't overlap so i'll write text box dot x so i've accessed the initial x position x coordinate and added 5 to it and then i'll write text box dot y so i'll increase the y coordinate by 5 to have a margin of 5 units and then yeah then i'll also do this thing let me write the code first then you might understand i'll write text box dot w so i've accessed the width and i'll take the maximum of 100 my default width and the surf variable width. so surf is my surface the text surface and i'll use the get width method to get my current width of the text and add 10 to it again to have a margin and so that things don't overlap so what i have done is maybe whatever the default size of my text box is you outgrow that maybe whatever the text you have input that's longer than your default box size so if my text is smaller than the width the default width fine no problem and if it is greater than the default width it'll take the width of the text cool and then i'll update this i've already written this and uh, then i'll set up the frame rate since i've taken the clock object already i'll write clock.tick and 50 
So if I run this now, I see a purple outline box and if I click, I take my cursor inside the box, I see the border to change its color and become red. And I can start typing now, I can type in anything. And you can see after a certain length, when the width of my text increases, the width of the text box also increases. So that's what it does. This max function on the 38th line it lets you decide when to increase the box size our rectangular box size so everything is working as we want it to we can type in easily and yeah that that's pretty much it about this program i hope you understood whatever the code was whatever we wrote